In this problem, there's a mass attached to a spring, and it's forced by a sinusoidal forcing function. And there's also friction between this sliding mass and the bottom surface. So first, and we're asked to determine the am maximum amplitude of the steady state function. So what we need to do first is we need to, to, to determine the differential equation of motion, and then um, from there, um, determine the steady state solution and determine the maximum of that steady state function. Okay, so first we start with the free body diagram and um, we simply isolate the block and this block will have the following forces which I will draw in red. So we have force due to the spring Fk on the left, because we're assuming uh, x to the right. Then we have a force from the forcing function, which points to the right. F naught sine of omega naught t. Then we have gravitational force, Fg. We have a normal force, N, and we have a friction force, FF. Okay, so these are all the forces, and now we do a sum of forces in the x direction and sum of forces in the y direction. Now, sum of force in the y direction simply yields that, so sum of forces in the y is equal to zero because there's no acceleration in the y direction, it's just sliding. So we get the following, that Fg is equal to n, and we get that n is equal to mg. And we do a sum of force, so this is the x direction again, and this is y direction. Sum of forces in the x is equal to ma, because we only have acceleration in the x direction, we get the following. F naught sine of omega naught t minus Fk minus Ff is equal to mx double dot. So again, I replaced acceleration with second derivative of x with respect to time. Now, if we rearrange and um, to plug in the values for these terms, so fk is mu mg, because it's mu n, and n is mg, uh, the ff, and then fk is kx, um, and we take all of these x terms to the right side, we get the following. f naught sine omega naught t is equal to kx, or mx double dot, plus kx plus mu mg. And again, this mu mg comes from the fact that force of friction is mu times the normal force, and we said that the normal force is mg. So now we have this differential equation um, with the x terms on the right side and the t terms on the left side. And we can solve, we can try and solve for the steady state function. Function. So the steady state function we know is the particular solution. So and to solve for the particular solution, we assume a function of the same form as this. Okay? So we assume that x particular is going to be equal to a constant c times sine of omega naught t. Okay, so this is just standard way of solving these differential equations or solving specifically for the particular solution. You take a function of the, the same form as this but with a different constant c. Now we have to solve for c. So what we can do is we can um, take the derivative of this well, we can take this and plug it into here as x. So we can take this and plug it directly into here, but here we have to take this second derivative with respect to time. 
So if we take the second derivative of xp, we get the following, negative c times omega naught squared. So we get two omega naughts out because um, of the chain rule. And then we have sine omega naught t. Okay, so now that we have these two terms, we can take these and plug them into here. Respectively, this doesn't depend on x, so this is constants that we have. Um, and then we're going to have an equation in terms of c, and we can solve for that c. Okay, so we get the following. f naught sine omega naught t equals so mass c omega naught squared sine omega naught t plus k times c sine omega naught t plus mu m g. Okay, so now we can rearrange and we can divide everything by sine omega naught. So this term goes away, this term goes away, this term goes away, and we just have this divided by uh, sine omega naught t. Okay, to simplify and get rid of all those signs. Um, and we get the following, c times k minus m omega naught squared is equal to f naught minus mu mg divided by sine omega naught t. Okay, so again, I divided everything by omega naught, and then I took this term and, um, well, I took this term and brought it over to this side, and then collected um, the c out of these two terms, okay? And now solving for c, the constant c, we get that c is equal to f naught minus mu mg divided by sine omega naught t. And this is all divided by k minus m omega naught squared, okay? And this is our constant c, okay? So our amplitude is c, because this is the amplitude. This part here varies between negative one and one, so to get the maximum, we just assume that's one, and we find c, okay? So c here also depends on t, okay? So what we need to do is we need to determine when this function here is a maximum. So um, it's gonna be a maximum when th sine theta is equal to zero. So when we plug in zero, we get the following. So sine theta equals to zero, or approximately equals to zero. Um, we get that f naught over k minus m omega naught squared. And we have all of the all of these numbers. So f naught we're given is five newtons divided by k, which we are given is ten newtons per meter minus m, which is five kilograms times omega naught squared which is three radians per second squared. And so the final answer is C equals to negative 0.143 meters, which is the maximum amplitude.